So the kind of the census data kind of underpins um, a majority of the, the most important research in this country. It does. I, I guess another example and indicating how the census, even though the recent data we've got, the most recent data we've got are quite old now, they're still in many ways the best data we've got. Um, very few other resources give us at a really spatially detailed national scale uh, breakdowns of the number of people in different ethnic groups. And we know from COVID-19 that different ethnic groups have different, um, ha have experienced infections from COVID-19 and deaths at differing rates. But only really the census can give us a really spatially detailed picture of where people in different ethnic groups are living. And so I guess the there's a new census coming up. Um, what are you looking forward to with this, uh, with the data that's going to be taken from this census and how could it immediately have an impact on um, changing what we do in society? Yeah, well, obviously we're really excited about the 2021 census, which is as we record, about to take place. Um, we're really excited to see how well it goes. One of its big innovations is that it's predominantly being carried out online. So people can complete their census on their laptop, on a tablet, on their phone, uh, any kind of device they want to use. One of the big strengths of that is it's going to give us the data more quickly than has been possible in the past. And we're really interested in looking at the social patterns that that data is going to show us. So for example, when we looked at the 2011 census, one of the things that became very apparent in it was in some places, especially in London, the growth of private renting. And we're interested in seeing how that's panned out when we look at it when we look at it in a spatially detailed way across the whole country, what has the last 10 years been like? We're also vitally interested in what exactly the picture of the country is at the moment. We know this is an extraordinary time for the country for a number of reasons, both for because of COVID-19, people have lost their jobs, people have changed the way that they work, people are on furlough, people uh, have moved around the country to be in bubbles with other family members and, and so on. And at the same time, we've got changes in the economy due to Brexit. So having a snapshot of the nation at the moment is going to be absolutely fascinating. We don't know, you know, how it's going to go over the next few years, but needing to having to know about the nation at the moment is really vital for understanding what the next few years are going to present us with and how we can steer ourselves through the next few years. So you think uh, the data from this census will help uh, quite in a big way with dealing with the, the problems caused by the pandemic and also much more beyond that in terms of our future. So in a way, um, it kind of it, it's not just looking at the pandemic; it's looking at kind of how we're going to recover and incorporate it into our future over the next few years, ten years or so. Yeah, there's obviously a huge number of questions that face us about recovering from the pandemic, um, in how we rebuild all sorts of sectors that have been massively affected by uh, successive lockdowns and and inability to reopen at all over the period. So the census will tell us something about how the economy has changed, how people's occupations have changed. Um, this will help us to understand what happened over the year of the pandemic and the extent of the task we face in both rebuilding our economy and building back better, building back differently. One example of that that we can think about are journeys to work. Obviously, lots of people have changed the way that they work. Lots of people are working at home. Lots of people have changed their jobs. Uh, at the same time, a lot of people have shied away from using public transport for various reasons. They don't want to be on a crowded 
tube, for example. So people have changed the way they commute to use other methods, uh, walking or cycling to work if they live near work. But at the same time, other people have shifted to using their car to get to work when they might have used public transport uh, earlier. It's really going to be really important for us to know the, the extent to which that has happened in both ways. That has really important implications for provision of public transport and other sorts of transport infrastructure. But it's also really important for understanding uh, our impact on the environment and our wish to become a, a, a less carbon focused uh, economy. One of the things that's happened in this round of the census, of course, is that Scotland have moved their census to 2022. And one of the things we're going to be able to do, looking at that, that will present its own issues in analysis of data. But one of the things we'll be able to do is compare England and Wales in 2021, when hopefully the pandemic is receding, hopefully future waves won't be as bad. We'll be able to compare that with Scotland in 22, which hopefully will have had a year of recovering um, when it comes to to taking their census. So we'll be able to look at Scotland and say, okay, how has Scotland changed in that year since the census was conducted in England and Wales and Northern Ireland? Yeah, so do you think this census could be one of the most important ones for quite, quite some time? And then how, how far back would you go in terms of the, the importance that it has on our society? I think this is absolutely the most important census we've we've had um, in in a very long time, and I don't really know when you could um, when you could go back to. I mean, you know, maybe sort of 1921 and a country that was coming out of the First World War and the uh, 1918 flu epidemic, or you could look to you know the 1951. Uh, census after World War II, although obviously in that case there'd been, you know, six years of, of change in the country. The, the census in, nine, in 2021 is right in the middle of what's going on. I think it's going to provide hugely interesting data to social science researchers and to policy analysts now. But as we look towards the future as well, historians will find it fascinating and, and really useful that we held a census in the middle of our pandemic. And you say the significance of having Scots census in 2022 um, compared to the census in the rest of the UK this year is, is quite a kind of, um, it's quite an important kind of way to measure uh, the difference in that time. So it gives you a chance to measure the difference um, kind of in muscleology in, in recovery. Yeah, I think we can try and look for the silver linings that we can find in things that happen in, in, in everyday life. And clearly the Scottish census being in 2022 poses a number of problems for interpretation of the data and analysis of the data, um, especially for things like cross-border flows and so on. Um, and we know that there are the people that won't be counted in either census because they've moved from Scotland to England or Wales or Northern Ireland. But conversely, there'll be people that are counted in both censuses because they've moved to Scotland in this year, that year. So there's going to be interesting effects in the data. In terms of analysis, they're not going to affect analysis particularly badly, I think, unless you're specifically interested in sort of the Scottish borders region and people moving across that border for work and so on. And if you are, that, that analysis can, is going to be difficult. But I think there's this natural experiment that, that having the census in Scotland in 2022 will give us of having a census in the same country offset by a year. And we can see if we assume Scotland's state at the moment is you know, pretty similar to the rest of the UK in terms of the, the economy, we'll have like, you know, a year's difference to see 
how Scotland has recovered from it. How have people gone back to working in the jobs that they used to? Have they gone to different jobs? The way that they move, the proximity to work, all those sorts of things, we'll be able to get some sense of has that changed in a year in a way that suggests there might be some sort of long-term change in the way people think about the way they live and work. So it could provide some strong evidence to help us as people adapt to the new, the new world we're going to enter and also help government policy kind of help us to, to adapt as well successfully. Yeah, absolutely. And government policy that's developed in an absence of data, however well-meaning and however well thought out it might be, is always going to suffer from not being fully informed. Um, the more we can inform government policy with decent data, then the better that policy has the potential to be.